Jewish Education and Media is pleased to present L'Chaim, a program that highlights the people, issues, and events of importance to the Jewish community. Now here is your host, Rabbi Mark Golub. I'm Mark Golub, and we all know how complicated Israel's relationship is to the West Ridge, what's been called the West Bank, and which traditional Jews call Judea and Samaria. We all know how complicated an issue is the West Ridge. Should part of it, or all of it, be the home of a Palestinian state in the concept of a two-state solution? An overwhelming majority of American Jews believe it is the only solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the only means of maintaining the integrity of Israel as both a Jewish and democratic state. For many American Jews, their number one beef with Israel is that Israel does not treat well enough the Palestinians on the West Ridge and in Gaza, and many feel Israel does not extend to its own Palestinians living in Israel equal rights and benefits of citizenship. And so any policy which threatens to impede or perhaps forever prevent the possibility of a two-state solution is roundly criticized. Within the liberal Jewish community here in America, many Jews, including rabbis and Jewish leaders, are highly critical of the past Netanyahu governments for their right-wing bias. They feel that the settler goal is the total annexation of the West Ridge as part of a rejection of a two-state solution. And their feeling has grown stronger in the wake of a formal settler plan to double the Jewish population on the West Ridge from roughly half a million Jews today to a million Jews by 2029. How is that plan justified? And how do the leaders of those living on the West Ridge view the issue of a two-state solution and the challenge of maintaining Israel as a democratic Jewish state? Well, on this edition of L'Chaim, we have the wonderful opportunity to hear from a leader of the West Ridge Jewish community living in biblical Judea and Samaria, to hear from him firsthand what his community has in mind. I'm pleased to introduce to you Yigal Delmoni, the CEO of the Yesha Council, which is the umbrella organization of municipal councils of Jewish communities on the West Ridge. Let me tell you a little bit about Yigal Delmoni. Yigal has a master's degree in conservation, landscape, and heritage planning from Bar Ilan University and has been a leader in Yesha for many, many years. In its current role as Yesha's CEO, Yigal Dilmoni is responsible for Yesha's strategic planning, and Yigal represents the Yesha Council to the Israeli government and to the Knesset. Yigal Dilmoni lives on the West Ridge with his wife and five children in Avnei Chefetz. And Yigal, it is such a pleasure to have you with us. Shalom, shalom. Thank you for joining us. Shalom. It's a pleasure to me to be here inside your home and inside Manhattan, where you live. It's quite something, isn't it, Manhattan? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yes. By the way, you told me one very interesting little thing about how there's one thing that is very similar in terms of people living on the West Ridge and getting to work and people here in New York. Yeah. And it had to do with traffic. Heavy traffic. You know, I came here and I walk a lot. And I, even when I want to take a taxi or Uber, I say, why it's take more time than I walk uh, by steps. So it's very heavy traffic and everybody that have to come inside Manhattan, they say, oh, I leave my car outside and get with train or bus. So it's the same problem in our area at the last five years. I have, I have to explain to the people why, why it became now this problem. For all over the years that Israel is in Yudan Shomron, all the planners in Israel 
that planned the Tama in Hebrew Tama is the master plan of Israel. They plan only north and south. In this, you see this, in this tiny area near Tel Aviv here, you, and never plan this area, what we call Judah and Shomron. They always plan like this. And north, here, south, north, south. North, south. And they're never, and we have here magnificent Roads, highways, highway, one, yes, a lot of but highways. No, not the same kind of highways east-west. No, never have a master plan of road, of transportation, of public transportation here on Yudah and Shomron. So the quality of life of Israeli and also to the Arab is getting high and high. And we have more car, and they have more car, and they have a good life. The Palestinians living here in Yudah and Shomron, the Arabs have a good life. Not when we get it for Gaza, the Gaza they have a be, be, um, horrible. Most horrible life. Here they have a good life, and we drive in the same road, and it's old road. It's the period of the, of you know the, the Turkish, the Ottoman <laughs> period, and we drive in the same road, and it's more it will more heavy and heavy to drive. My my neighbor, he was some of the founder of my community of Nechefetz. He, he he, he took a house in not far from Tel Aviv and he live there all the week and he come for weekend for Shabbat he coming for for his house because he said I have four hour a day a traffic and my wife also four hour a day in, in, in the car so why we have to do it so the, this is the, now the main issue of, of the people that are living in, in Yesha now is a high, heavy traffic. That's fabulous. Yeah, no, Very, a lot of people think that the terror is the main problem. Yes. No. 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 It's, it's your traffic pattern. It's my traffic. The terror is a problem. We have to fight it and the and idea fight against and the Shabak and all the security are fighting against and, and, and we win and we will be win. Maybe we have some terror attack and, and it's cause us a lot of not, not it's not good, but the life, the usually life. Day to day. Yeah, day to day is, is a problem of traffic, a problem of electricity. You know, in the, in the winter, we sometimes we don't have electricity in our house because they never plan. And for 100 years or 15 years later, they don't, never plan this, this area. Do you have internet? Yeah. Internet, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have. Better than electricity? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about this in yeah. a few moments. I f first, I, ha I have to understand who you are. Mm -hmm. So, you a Sabra? You born in Israel? Yeah. Your parents came from where? Oh, don't fray, I tell you. Don't fray. They come from Afghanistan. Lovely. <laughs> yeah. Really? They were born and married in Afghanistan, and they make Aliyah to Israel. My father was the leader of the community in Harat City. It's uh, the next... It's, Next city in, in Kabul and Afgan and Harat, the, the main cities in, in Afghanistan. So he was the my, my father, and my grandfather was the, the the leader of the community there, and he met Kalyan, came to Ranana. We, we lived in Ranana. A lot and of when years. did he come? Roughly. Sixty two. Sixty two. Sixty two. Before the six day war. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so your parents come in the sixties and your Born in Israel, yeah, and what kind of? Since I, you already said you went to a Haredi school, what was the Jewish character of your home as you were growing up? Look, my father and my mother love Israel. Wonderful, they suffer a lot, but a lot when they make aliyah. Why? They, because you know the. In the 60s, when you come to Israel, you, you there there was a leader, and here they walk in the factories, and don't, don't but they never complain, complain, yeah, complain, complaining. They never complain. They teach us all four children. They teach us, teach us to work hard, to learn, to love Israel. We go to the army. My, we are three brother. We go together to the party troops in Israel. It's a very tough unit in Israel. And we make uh, three years in the army, and now I still now serve in, in the reserve. reserve in Israel. And they teach us to love Israel. They teach us to, they teach us to 
the never complete, not complete, work hard. If you want to make something, work hard, never complain, say the, the government did not, didn't, didn't give me this, and um, I didn't get there, I have to be here. No, go learn, work, work hard, and then you, you get it. Look, it's, it's not easy to make Aliyah. It's not easy, I know. It's not easy to change all your culture and transfer it from here to here. I know it. But if you do it, it's make to your children a better life. Your children and your grandchildren will grow up in better life, in the in better community. And in I one, feel one, that way, my it's very important what you're saying. When you say a better life and a better community, what do you mean? No, it's not. A, it's not an economic life. Yes, I life. understand. Yeah. You're talking about quality of life. I hear from people that here that you pay a lot of money to educate your, your children. I said, if you have it, do it. But in Israel, you can get a Jewish education, or yeshiva education, or other Jewish uh, education. You, you can get it. Not, it's something like free. But also all around you is a Jewish. It's your, sta it's your state. It's your government. Even you from the right or the left, you love it, you don't love it, but it's your. But I don't call people make aliyah, so it's not my job to call the Jewish make aliyah. But when I see about my parents, they suffered, but I have a good life. So even think about it. When you make aliyah, maybe you have some problem, but your child has a good life. How did you end up on the West Ridge? Because that's not where your parents were. Yeah, I learned in Eli, it's a mechina called Ne David, and after that I learned in Yeshivat Esdel at Gush Katif, at Nevet Kalim, in the Gaza Trip that destroyed in uh, 2008. And, and, eight. Um, and then I married to my wife, and we search about a good community to grow up our children. So at this day, some guys from other yeshiva uh, organized together to build a new community in the north of the Shomron. So I go there and see the people and say, I, why I want to, be, to live here. And then there are no cities there. There are a, a mountain with not nothing. And I say, I, I buy this house. On it, it, the house wasn't planned. I said, I want this house. <laughs> and I, they gave them money and they built, like, two, two years build this house and make a road and make things like this. The government done, does it, done it, and I pay to the government. By the way, you built on empty land. Yeah, yeah it's, it's state land, not empty. Empty state empty land. Empty state land, yeah. Okay, this is not land that belonged to anybody. No, or... no. It, it, you know, it's, <laughs> we call it fake news. A lot of people, you, you hear from a lot of people here, they don't know what's happening in our area. They only see it in the CNN and in the, in the, in the, in the you know, all the newspaper here in uh, New York Times. And they hear what the Palestinians say and they never be. So this is one of our main activities in, you, in what we're doing in Yasha Council. We bring people around the world. We bring members of, of parliaments around the world. We be, bring uh, 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 leaders and um, uh, opinion makers all over the world, and, and also from Israel. And we take him to, the, to, our, uh, to our area. I, I'll give you an example. We take some members of parliament from Brazil, and we take him to Shiloh. Mm -hmm. It's here. Mm -hmm. Shiloh, when the mm -hmm. Mishkan mm -hmm. was, the tabernacle. And they stand there, and we say, look, it's 400 here. It was the capital of Israel in the period of the Tanakh, of the Bible. And you say, what? The Palestinians say they're here before you. I say, look, it's 400 years before 3,000 years. This is our, was our capital. And they see the place. They see was the, where, where was the Mishkan. And he said, how? We don't know about it. Nothing. And then we took him to Puduel. It's here. There are a big point of view that you're standing here. And you see all Tel Aviv and all the 
the, the, the urban area of Tel Aviv and Gush Dan, what we call Gush Dan. And then we said, look, this is the Ben Gurion airport. And when we're standing here, we see all the airplanes that are going and landing in Ben Gurion airport. And I said to them, look, we are standing here in the place that someone say, give it to the Palestinian, give it to the Hamas, give it to the radical Islam. Uh, and if, if there was here, you feel, if they were here, you feel that com com comfortable to land in, 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 in the Ben Gurion airport, they can throw a stone and crash your air, airplane. It's never, you cannot believe that people think that here, out this big mountain, that standing in the top of Tel Aviv, of the big area of Israel, not far from, from Ben Gurion airport, nor far, far from the biggest place that living, Jewish living here, you think that we can give it to the Palestinian, to the Arab? Look what's happened in Gaza Strip. That the people here, the people there suffered, the Arabs suffered, and also Israel suffered because the Hamas take control. Uh, so this is what happened here in Yudah and Shomron. And when we show, show this to the member of parliament, uh, how deep root a deep roots of this area for the old period, and how it's keep Israel to the next generation, they say, oh, we never know it. So this is, it's, it's very important to us to explain it to the people, not hear only the fake news. And the same thing that what you ask about the state land. You know, all the Jewish community, as this area, all the cities are in the state land. Even when we have some problem with the planner, it's very small and we can handle it. But all the Jewish community are in state land. So, you know, half million people living in big city, big community, they all, all the government plan it and build it. So, it, it's fake news to say that it's it's private land mm -hmm. or Palestinian land. And even in the little, little, little places that we have a problem, we can buy it. Like here, if you here, if you in the States and you build a mistake, you make a mistake and build in other place, you can buy, it, buy the land and everything is okay. But it's not the main issue, it's very small. It's half percent of all the area. All the area is built on state land. I want to tell you a story and tell me if this resonates with you, whether you understand what this story is. Mm -hmm. I visit Carnation Rome. Wow. Yeah. With a camera crew and we go and it's a it's a gorgeous community, lovely, lovely people. And they've come from many parts of the world. There's people from Great Britain, there are people from the United States. In the Valisa, you work. Yes. Yeah. At one point, I have this conversation with someone, I believe he was from, the, from Great Britain. And he said to me, you know, the Palestinians now come and they say, say, that's my house. You're living in my house. I have the key to that house. And he says, I have photographs. There was no Nothing. houses anywhere here. <laughs> Nothing was here when we built Carnation Rome. Over there was an Arab village, but here, nothing. But now they say, that was my house. And the problem, it's what you're talking about. The problem is, without meaning, this, it has nothing to do with whether you want to be a kind person. You don't want to be kind. I'm, not, I'm not unsympathetic to people who are in need, but American Jews, American Jews, let alone Americans, should understand that what you call fake news is there is an ideology that drives the Palestinian narrative. It's interesting. You know the word, a narrative is a yeah. sipur. Yeah, yeah. It's a story. It's, also it's a story. I am not interested in a narrative. I want to know the emes. What really happened? What was, what's the truth, not what the story is? And very often in America, 
Jews only learn the story, and the story is not an honest story. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I tell you a story. You told me about Karni Shomron. <laughs> it's not far from my house, but I tell you a story. Look, near Karni Shomron, there are an Arab village. It's called Azun. This is the name of the village, Azun. When I born and live, when I was a child, in Ranana, next to my house. And we said Ranana is in Israel, in, in, on the other on side the other of the Green Line. Yeah. In the, there was a little, an old village. No one lived, lived there. And, and houses that start to destroy it. And a mosque. It's called Khirbat Azun. Azun was not far from Ranana. And when the Arabs say, look, this is the key for my house, they're not saying for Karnei Shomron or for Avne Hefet. They say it for Azun and Tel Aviv and Yafo and Haifa yes. and Ashdod. Yes. They want all the land between the Jordan Valley and the sea. They think this is all Palestine. They don't want Israeli will be here. Yeah. They want Israeli will be in the sea. So we fight against this. When we say no Palestinian state, we say because it belongs to the Israel. It belongs to our nation. And we think and we know that the Palestinian does not want this land because until 67, they was here. Israel wasn't at Judea and Samaria. Why they start a war against Israel? If they want only the Palestinian state, so you have it. Why you start a war? You're living now in Gaza Strip. Why you fire a rocket against us? This is your take, your land. Make it, you know, make it Riviera, make it good life. They don't want it. They want your land. Yeah. Yes. They want all the land of the yes. area. Oh, I am sometimes so surprised, Yigal, that everybody doesn't understand it. It's so simple. Okay. Okay. When you and your wife went to this barren land, saw in your mind a house, two years later, there's your house. Did you do that for ideological reasons, or was it you were simply looking for a nice place to live? Oh, it's, it's a combine. Yes. It's, it was my ideologics that we have to grow up this land. When I, grew, when I, get, when I came, to, came to live in, in Avne Hefet, there was only 120,000 people living in Judea and Shomron. There, this is How many the years ago, roughly? 13 years, 25, 13. 13. So we've gone from 150 to 450, 450. in 13 years. Yeah, it, I, I can show it. It's wonderful to see it. You know, we, we have to speak about good things also, not the bad things. Look at this. This is the grow up of the Jewish population in Judea and Shomron. This is 67 zero. This is now, today, this day, it's half, something like half million people living here. Yet, yeah, look the growing up, and we want to go to here to million. Bezrat Hashem, we handle it. But we, it, it's good. It's a miracle. You know, we cannot believe it. Okay, so. I want you to answer the questions that American Jews, by the way, American Jews who love Israel, they're not anti-Israel. They don't, want to, they don't want to see Israel destroyed. Most of the That's American correct. Jews, yeah, yes. But they believe you and your ideology is wrong. Yeah. Okay. And, this is, and they'll, say, they'll ask you certain things, and they have a right to ask you. Okay. So question number one is, you got, you've got millions of Arabs, Palestinians, living on what is called the West Bank, the, it's really, a, your point is very well taken. The reason why I hate the term West Bank is that it's a mountain range that overlooks mm -hmm. Israel. Yeah. And West Ridge gives you a little bit of a sense yeah. of it being a high up. Okay. So we have, but we have millions of Palestinians. It's not clear to me exactly how many millions. 1.8. Okay. So some say around 2 million. Yeah. So close to 2 million Palestinians living on the West Ridge. And two things. Number one, 
their leadership hates you. They do not want to live side by side with you. They want you destroyed. And number two, if you make the entire West Ridge part of Israel, you're incorporating into the Israeli politic two million people who A, don't want to be there, and B, who will do everything they can to destroy you. And what do you do in terms of giving them civil rights, social rights, health care, let alone voting rights? Because if you give them voting rights, you may be voted, Israel may be voted out of existence. And if you don't give them voting rights, then you're denying the democratic goal of the state of Israel when Ben-Gurion says, and the entire Jewish world said, anybody wants to live with us in peace, anybody wants to be a Ger Toshav in peace, you're welcome. You're welcome. And you'll have every right that a Jewish Israeli has. What are you going to do with two million Palestinians if you want to basically make all of Judea Shomron a Jewish part of Israel proper? First, it's a good question. It's a very hard question. And we handle it a lot of fear. And we think about it a lot of fear. It's not so easy to answer it, but I try to do it. First of all, we have to make Sumera, you know, stop making ra, bad. What is the bad? A lot of years, people say, let's separating the lead and let's make two state solution. It does not work, and we go it again and again and again. And every time that we do it, we start terror. We have a, a lot of problems. So first, throw it out. No state solution. No two state solution. Now what's can we do, we, we do at this area? Look, we think, and this is our main vision to the future, Israel have to take his sovereignty, sovereignty, not annex. Annex is something that is not you. It's sovereignty. In Israel, we call it ribonut. It's a new word. You have to learn it. Everybody here in the States have to learn it because this is the Say baby. again. Ribonut. Sovereignty. Sovereignty. Sovereignty, yeah. So we think that we have to bring the sovereignty of Israel of this area. But look, we understand that are something like 1.8 million Arabs live there. But we think also that we live there and we will be live there forever. We don't going anywhere. But we know that even the Arab Till now, that nothing happened, they're not going anywhere. So we have to learn to live next by next together. So what we have to do when we bring our sovereignty, we don't have to bring them another right to vote. Because now, they have right to, wo to vote to the parliament of the Palestinian in Ramallah. They have the right to vote in election to the Palestinian Authority. Their leaders are bad, so we have, they, they have, and we have to help them to change their leader, but they have the right to vote right now. Why we have to bring them two rights to vote? I have one right to vote to the Knesset. Because you control them. Yeah, I control the if security. Contr no, I control the security. All our civilizants' life controlled by the Palestinian Authority. Yes. I control only the border and only the security. Yes, but this means, incidentally, you understand I'm sympathetic to you. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But I also understand the argument. And the argument is, the Palestinian lives with a knowledge, ego, that any time an Israeli soldier wants to, he can come into their home in the middle of the night, take them out of bed, and take them anywhere he wants. If he's now, a terrorist. By the way, that's our perspective. And I think it's the, I, I appreciate that perspective. But if you live that way, you're living under someone else's control. Yes, within their community, they live their own world. They have their own schools, their own press, their own government, their own television, 
their own hospitals. They live their own life. Yeah. But there's one difference. Israel has the guns. And Israel has the right to say, and by the way, I'm sympathetic to this. We believe, by the way, it's, we're worried that your son is going to be a suicide bomber, and we want you to help us find him. And we will take you in the middle of the night and grab you out of bed, which is a horrifying thing in general, although it's, more, it's not as horrifying as a suicide bomber blowing kids up. Yeah. But the answer you'll get from American Jewry is, wait a minute, we understand that they have a great deal of autonomy, social autonomy. They live their own life with their own society. But they don't have sovereignty. You have sovereignty. Look, it will never be. You cannot take half a million Israelis that are living in that area and get it out for our ancient homeland. Yes, you, you know, but, but, that's, just a, but no. that's why people used to be so angry at the settler movement. But they it's now, said, it's they done. They said, You'll, if you keep doing this, you keep doing it's this. It's done. Half a million people live So all it's the people done. who were upset with it, when it happened, they were right. No, because we have our rights to live here because this is our homeland. It's called Judea. You know, the Judea area. What is Judea area? It's the Ju 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 Jewish land. But look, the opposite of what you ask is that the Palestinian have an army and have a gun and have a tanks and airplane and that what happened with Israel what happened with Tel Aviv you if you live here in Manhattan and you're not a terrorist okay you're little thief not you sorry not you another this another <laughs> guy <laughs> and is a little thief the police can get inside your house and take you out from your uh, for your bed What's different if it's your police or the police of New Jersey? Oh. What's the different? It's not different. It's, it's, it's not different. No, it's all our police. That's not fair. Yeah, I, I, but if you're a terrorist, if you don't want to be that the, the army get inside your home and take it out, don't be a terrorist. Don't learn your children to kill Jewish. Don't learn in the school to kill Jewish. Don't learn that the Muslims have to destroy all Israel. Don't learn it to people and don't grow up the next generation that be a terrorist. Stop it! We want to live here, and we have to live here. If we give our security to the Palestinians, we see what happened in Gaza. We see what happened here until 67. Why we have to do it again and again and again in one game? We know how it will be end. Why we have to go to their place? So I think maybe they don't have their all uh, uh, states, yeah? They're not, but you look, look here. I, I, I show you something. All over Israel, yeah? This is little Israel. All of these are Muslim states, are Arab states. Why do they have another little one? Why? If you want your states, go another place. I said, no, you can live in our side. You can get your civilization's life. You can walk. You can have your education, but don't learn the children to kill. But have your own education. Have your health healthy. Have your um, economic drive, agriculture, what you want. You have a parliament in, in Ramallah. You have a government. Live your life. Security and border is in the hand of Israel. I think it's also important, you know to me, you know, it's also important to states. Why? This is the kingdom of Jordan. You know what will happen, what will be happened, if in the, this high mountain will set the Hamas a radical Islamic, it's something like ISIS. They want to kill Jordan also. And American, America states have to keep Jordan life. If here will be a radical and Islamic region, and here in, in Iraq or in, in, in Iran have a radical, they take over the land of, 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 of Jordan. 
it's important not only for us, it's important for all over the world that here the securities and the life uh, and the security and the border have to still be in the, ha in the hand of Israel. We are democracy, we are friend of states, we are friend of America, we are friend of all the democracies around the world and we are not a radical regime in our area. You, you cannot you can say I, I don't I don't uh, think that the, the, the government of Israel doing well but you know it's a democratic we can speak about it but when we get out from this area the ISIS get inside the Hamas a terror organization get inside so what will be happen so we have to keep you know we also I think it's good to the Arab because you know who is the most biggest killer of the Muslims? The Muslim themselves. They kill a lot, not Jewish kill Muslim. most of the Muslims kill by themselves. We keep this area against ISIS and against Hamas that want to fight against the Sunni inside our area. So, I know that it's difficult to, to, to hear that the Palestinians never be a state here. Never, but this is the, the realistic. If you if you keep, if people keep starting, keep thinking that will be sometime will be there a Palestinian state, they go in the wrong way, and they fail and they fail and they fail, and when you fail, fail and fail again, it's 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 problem. We have to think think out of the box, out out of the box. Look, we are very appreciate what Trump. President Trump think because Trump say, look, we have a big issue that we can never uh, uh, gap between Israel and the Palestinians. They speak about Jerusalem and the separate land and the Palestinian and refugees. They want refugee come back to Tel Aviv and to Yafo, and we can never gap this this uh, issue. So put it on the side. And let's go to other issue, a big issue, that is for the life of the people. Let's speak about economic. Let's speak about develop of the area. This is the main issue in the Bahrain uh, conference. And I think it's, it's good thinking to say, let's think out of the box. Let's think how we bring people a good life. In Yasha Council, the last two years, we work very, very hard for to bring a master plan to the area. That speaking about a new road, it's it's the same road we're driving in the same road of the Palestinian new road, new factories. You know, thousands of Palestinians working in our factories and bring to their family better life. You know. Half of the people in Gaza are unemployment. In our area are 18 Palestinian unemployment because they're working in our factories. They're working in our agriculture. So let's make it biggest. The BDS are the big problem of the BDS is not us. It's for the Palestinian because if factories get out from Yudan and Shomron, you know that the fire, the, the fire, the, the Palestinian, like in Soda Stream. So let's bring a, a, a more factories, more economic, more tourism. We want to double. We have a plan to double. We have two and a half million tourists in here in Yudan Shomron. In all these areas, four or five. We want to double the, the tourists in South area that people come and see the area and learn about the area. And when you see it in your eyes. You think that you think other uh, and other issues. So let's put in other sides the two-state solution, the the failed two-state solution that people speak about. It it's not work. It's never work, and it will be no work. It will be no work for the future. And let's speak about the the life of the people, the, how we, we we learn to live together, how the Palestinians stop to learn the children that. They have to kill the Jewish and throw Israel to the sea. How we make a better economic. We go together with them to walk. I see them on the road. 
when I, we have a car accident together, and unfortunately, uh, and we help them with the health, we take them with the ambulance to, 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 to hospitals. Let's bring life to the area. And this is the most important issue that we, we work about it. By the way, I think you say it as well as I've ever heard it. Wow. Yashikoach. In my Israeli English. And your wonderful English. Uh, we all understand exactly what you mean. It is a, look, this is a human quagmire. And just because people wish something doesn't make it true. And what you're saying is you, and you're not the first person, but you're not the first, this is not the first time I've heard the idea that even if there will be some kind of Israeli control of the West Ridge, the Palestinian will have full autonomy, full autonomy, with one exception. If he wants to kill us, we'll stop him. Mm -hmm. And if he ever doesn't want to kill us, we won't need to stop him anymore. Yeah. But let me ask you this. Somebody's going to say to you, aha, you are for apartheid. <laughs> what you're describing, Yigal, will mean that Israel will become apartheid state where a number of people inside Israel, sovereign, will not have the same rights. That's like South Africa. What do you answer? I answer to people that ask him, go learn. Go to learn what is apartheid. Ask South Africa what is apartheid. It's, you can never compare correct. what's you happening correct. now. Absolutely. Right now, you know, then, you know, in Israel, Arab live. One million Arab live their Israeli ideas. ideas you know, an Arab uh, uh, judge, judgment, get to jail the president of Israel. Yes. So, is this An not compare? A Palestinian Supreme Court judge is yeah. the one who sentenced an Israeli president yeah. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. jail. But, and, uh, and even the Palestinian. But they're not talking about the Israeli. They're not talking about right. They're not talking about Israeli Palestinian. Yeah. But even now, even now, you know the Palestinians have almost all right, all the rights. Only the security is the hand in the hand of Israel. Okay. What do you think most Israelis think of your plan? Look, most of the Israeli. Uh, educate a lot of fears the left side in Israel say to them two state two state two state but now we see at the last 10 years that the people you know people in the last election we have another one <laughs> unfortunately but in the last election most of the people voted to party that say we go with Netanyahu and a lot of people vote to Netanyahu also and Netanyahu say before the election, I bring sovereignty to this area. So people go to vote, and most of them vote to, to, to Netanyahu, will be the next uh, uh, premier, prime minister of Israel. So th they support of these ideas. And a lot do not, correct? Yeah, yeah, we have, we have this to. Is a, this is a fight with inside Israel. Yeah. It's a democra democratic fight. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I can, I sit together with people from the left side of Israel and speak without, with them and we're explaining, but it's a democratic way in Israel right now, the people that are living in Israel vote to Netanyahu. This is the, the, the biggest pool that you can do, is go to election. So people vote. Do you worry how the world will react, especially the Western world? if Israel says publicly what you are suggesting? Yeah, I know it's not an easy issue. But sometimes Israel has to do what is good for us. And in the future, the world we understand, like, like Ramat Golan, you know, like Jerusalem. You know, it takes a lot of fear to to, uh, to, to to United States to recognize in the, the rights of Israel in Ramat Golan and also in 
in, in Jerusalem, like the capital of Israel. And now, and after, after the United States done it, a lot of other uh, countries came to Jerusalem. Absolutely. And so we have to do what we think is good for us. And if not now, maybe in future, the other country will understand it. Does Israel need the United States? Does Israel need U.S. support? Look, it's a big question to me, but... It's not an easy question? The answer yeah. is not an obvious yes? It's obvious yes, but, you know, I don't know if I can speak about the politics, politics in inside states, because I'm, I'm from outside. But in the time of Obama, we suffered a lot in Judea and Shomron. And... And, and we said, yeah, America is a big friend of Israel. But we don't have all the time the, the right to listen to uh, what's happening here. So you, I can tell you something, and you, then you say, oh, what what's, what's will be happening when other uh, 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 yes. president will be here? That's right. You yeah. may have another president in a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. But So I think we... We are big friends, Israel and American, big, big friend. American help Israel. And I think also American need Israel. Yeah, it's not one way. Absolutely. It's two way. You are our closest ally. Yeah. Israel is our number one ally. Yeah. Egal, do you hate Palestinians? No. Say it again. No, I not hate Palestinians. You know, I hate the leaders. I hate the terrorists. You know, in Israel, people think that we hate the Palestinians. You know who is most hating the Palestinians? The left side. They want to, we don't want to see them. Put them there, make a wall, and we live here. So they don't want to see them. I live next to them. I, I go to shop with, together with them in the market. I drive with them in the car. When I have accident or they have accident, I st stop to help them. And I, I, I met them, I speak with them. They're coming to work in my, in, my community, in my community. I cannot come to their village because there are some terrorists sometimes. But I don't hate them. They are people. They are, you say, they're living in my, my land. They have children. They're, 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 if they're not to make a terror, okay. we can live together. And I want to ask this question even though it's outrageous. You want to kill them? No. Oh. Okay. Do you want I don't want to kill anyone, uh, and only if he come to kill me, I will kill him. Only for road days. Yeah. Do you want to, do you want, there was a word that escapes me at the moment. Do you want to take them and transport them out no. of? No, I, I don't believe that in the, the, in the 19th century okay. we can the, do it. Okay, and the reason I ask is, very often, the settler community, is painted with a Mayor Kahana brush. And there was this party that even had to get permission from the Israeli Supreme Court, Court to yeah. run. And American Jewry was outraged because Netanyahu seemed to be willing to enter a deal with the inheritors of the Kach party, of the Kahana perspective. So when people here, oh, you're a leader of the West Bank community, you're a settler. Their, their immediate image of you is, you're a modern Mayor Kahana. I want you to speak to that. You hear my answer to your question, so I think what I answered until now is, is the answer. Look, but it's, it's inside issue of Israel. What the parties that can go run to election in Israel? It's an issue in Israel, and it we deal it. And the courts say yes, they can run to the to the Knesset. So maybe they think different even from me, yeah. But they are democratic in Israel. Yes, I understand. They, uh, that's a different. That's a different issue. My point is, you are a lovely person. You don't hate. You don't want to hurt anybody. You live side by side with Palestinians all the time. That's your life. You know them much better 
than even most Israelis know them. And what you're saying is you want to work out a way where ultimately Israel has an integrity that extends to places we have been for 4,000 years. And at the same time, you're willing, and you'll tell me if I've misunderstood you, you, Yigal, are willing for there to be places on the West Ridge where the Palestinians will live in their own community, under their own political system, with their own schools, their own police, their own newspaper, their own mosques. They'll live, and all you say is, leave us alone. And the person who then says to you, that is lovely, you're a lovely, when you have a million, five years later you're gonna to come to L'chaim and tell me you want two million, and then four million, and are you real? Is your long-term goal, Yigal, the expulsion and replacing the Palestinians who you're willing now to live with in Area A? But the truth is, your long-range goal is no Palestinians living of significant number in sovereign Israel. <sighs> I, 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 uh... You know, when Ben Gurion established the Israel state, there was six hundred thousand Israel living in 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 Israel, and there was something like one or two million Arabs living in the in the land. And it seems crazy, because if you think about it, Ben Gurion was a crazy guy. He established a state with a majority of Arabs, what is think to himself? But he believe. He believes that it's our, it's our land. And he believes in Shiva Tzion, the, the bringing the Israel to, 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 to Israel. So I think we can deal with this that issue next generation. But you know, I think it's also important to know that the growing up of the population of the Arab are getting down, not because of Israel, because they have a modern life and they don't work in the fields, they have a factory, they have, they, their women work, go to work. It's not like the old uh, uh, Arabs. The, the growing is, if they, what was be, I think, something like eight child to woman, now is 3.1 child to woman. And in also, only, also the Jewish are 3.1 children to, to women. And if it, we make it together with arrange aliyah from Europe, from other countries that uh, Jews suffered there, so we can handle it. And we trust God, like Ben Gurion done. We trust the, how we say it, the, the generation, the generation yes. of Israel that we build now the, the, you know, the great Israel again. So, Egal, what do you wish, the one thing that you wish American Jews and Americans understood better about the entire political situation that you're living with and trying to be creative with? What's the one thing you think we don't understand that you wish Americans understood better? No, I... I, I look to the camera and say it, okay? I say to the Jewish, American Jewish, come, and all, to all the Americans that see that show, come and see in your eyes what's happening in the land. Don't believe what you hear from the Palestinians. Don't believe what you read in the newspaper. Come to see in your eyes, you see a different things than you hear. And then you understand better. Believe us, believe us, this, this is our homeland. We want to live there. We don't kill our, we don't throw him from the houses. There are no one in, in, in Yudah and Shomron that live in the house of the Palestinian. Only in Hebron we buy, we buy the home from, from them. So don't believe what you hear, come to see, or invited us to your community so that we can explain it and show it for you uh, directly.
Mazal Tov. Thank you. You are fabulous. <laughs> Yodse <laughs> Minakal. Yodse Minakal. Thank you, Mom. I wish you kol tu What you're doing is 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 something that is uplifting all of us. It's it's very complicated. Wow. Well, and I you. know you. I know it's a struggle. And you're look. You you understand what the issues are, and you'll struggle with those issues. But I have faith in you, and I want you to promise me that you'll the next time you're in New York, you'll come and you'll sit in this chair, and we'll continue the discussion. Thank you. To, to promise. Me. תודה רבה. בבקשה. כל טוב והצלחה. תודה רבה. יגאל דלמוני, CEO of the Yesha Council, the umbrella organization of municipal councils of Jewish communities on the West Ridge, what's been called the West Bank. I hope you enjoyed hearing what Yigal had to say, and as always, I invite you to be in touch with me with any thoughts or comments you may have to the ideas expressed on this edition of the Chaim. You want to be in, uh, in touch with Yigal, you send me an email. I will forward it on to him. So please, email me, write me, post on our Facebook page, or tweet me. I look forward to hearing from many of you. And if you want to listen to my conversation with Yigal again, you can do so on podcast. Special thanks this week to Fern Hassan for helping with this edition of L'Chaim. Fern's a very special lady who has been very good to me and to JBS. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. L'Chaim, my friends, to life. Jewish education in media. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS with a tax deductible gift of $36, double chai, or more. Simply visit the JBS website at jbstv.org and click on the donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check to JBS, P.O. Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.